In this video I'm going to be looking at the Ready to Fly Quads Freestyle Flight Controller version 1.5. The main features of this board that I think are worth calling out, for one I think the board layout is fantastic. All of the pads are laid down in a way that make for a very clean build. Not only the ESC connectors and the corners of the board, but also are the 32-bit ESC telemetry pads. I think they did a great job on this. Another thing to call out are the four usable UARTs with not only one but two dedicated hardware inverters. This means no uninversion mod for your smart port telemetry on your uh, FR Sky receivers. It's also got some new capacitors that should mean super clean video. It's 2 to 6S capable if you're looking to board that hype train. And it's got the uh, rock solid MPU 6000 gyro, which is on most flight controllers these days. It's very proven and uh, known to do a pretty damn good job. The gyro is already a, a very noise resistant gyro, so the caps in line on the uh, gyro traces uh, don't seem super necessary, but I'm interested in trying it out and seeing if it makes any difference. And last but not least is the price. I think it comes in at a super reasonable price at $26.50. I think if you're looking for an F4 board that is going to be future-proof for a while and provide near top-of-the-line performance for a price that won't break the bank, this is going to be a great fit. The two things I'd be curious about testing in a V2 version of this board would be an F7 processor and a gyro that can do 32 kilohertz mode. I've been hearing that this combo with the uh, 32 kilohertz and the Kalman filtering is supposed to be just insane. But other than that, I think this is going to be a great board for most of us looking to build a freestyle or racing quad. All right, let's take a look at the board. All right, let's talk about the receiver setup. So you have all your receiver um, uh, pads right through here. So if you're going to be on Spectrum, you're going to be using your 3.3, your SAT, and your ground. If you're on Tyrannus, you're going to be using your SBUS, your 5 volt, and your ground. And then you've got your telemetry uh, pad here. And that's actually a uh, dedicated hardware inverter. So you can use your smart port telemetry from your, say, your RSXR receiver, hook it up here, and then on UART 3, you can enable smart port telemetry, and you're going to receive that right there on, on that pin. This is UART 3. On the outside of the board, we've got all of our motor uh, connections. So you're going to have your negative, your positive, your motor uh, signal wire, and then this RX4. You'll notice there's an RX4 on each side of the board. And that is where you're going to hook up your 32-bit uh, ESC telemetry. Uh, every one of those is connected, and the flight controller knows how to handle that, so you don't have to worry about um, running all of them to the same UART. That's just going to work. On the front side of the board, we have our camera connections. I like that they put that here, uh, opposite side of where our battery goes on the bottom side of the board, so that you you know you're only running a very short wire from here up to your camera, um, and that's going to be you have your camera uh, ground, your camera positive and then your camera uh, signal. So that's going to be your video in, which is going to run video in to your OSD, uh, which will then come out on the video outside of the board. And then you have camera C, and that's your camera control. So if you take your camera OSD uh, cable and you cut the end off that and you solder the, the positive side here, you're going to be able to uh, actually go in and modify your camera sensor settings uh, through your radio using this flight controller, which I think is pretty awesome. They sell this as an add-on to uh, other flight controllers as an external board, but it's pretty awesome that it's built right into this flight controller. On the other side of the board, we have our video uh, VTX pads, and that's going to be our video out, our positive, and our negative. We also have TX4 and RX4 here. If you're using uh, your telemetry uh, already, then you won't want to use uh, these pads. Just leave those alone. And then you have your LED, 5 volt, and ground. Those three are for your programmable LED. All right, you see these two jumpers here on the left. One's labeled 9 volt and one is labeled 5 volts. If you bridge the 5 volt gap, it will turn 5 volts out on for your VTX positive and camera positive leads. It will supply those two pads with 5 volts. Uh, inversely, if you leave that alone and you bridge this gap, it'll supply the VTX positive and the camera positive with 9 volts. If you bridge neither, you will get no voltage out on either of these. Um, so if your VTX and your camera don't take battery voltage, uh, I would suggest bridging one of these two gaps and connecting your uh, VTX and camera to these pads instead of to power and ground uh, on either side. On the opposite side of the board, we have our positive and negative battery pads. Uh, these pads are extremely durable. They do this test where they solder up uh, wires to these two, and then they yank on them to see if the pad pulls off. More times than not, I guess, the, the wire ends up breaking before the pad rips off. We have TX3 and RX3 here on the bottom side of the board. You're not going to use that if you're hooking up smart port telemetry to the top side of the board. Um, just ignore that. But if you're going to go with, uh, say, um, Crossfire 
and you weren't going to use the telemetry pad on the other side, if you're going to use crossfire, you would hook up your uh, 5 volt, your ground, and then you could hook up channels 3 and 4 to TX3 and RX3. All right, on the bottom side of the board, we have <clears throat> three sets of jumpers. You're going to bridge this jumper uh, to, to connect RX4 to EXT, and what that does is you're going to use this if you are not using the RX4 pads on the outside of the board, but instead you're going to supply uh, the 32-bit ESC telemetry to pin one on the cable connector on the other side of the board. All right, you're going to uh, jumper the second set of jumpers here. If instead of using RX4, you're going to just supply a current signal <clears throat> to the pin one on the Molex connector on the other side of the board. On this last jumper, you're going to short that if you want to use the internal current sensor on this board instead of the 32-bit uh, ESC telemetry on the outside of the board, which is RX4, or on pin one of the Molex connector. We've got our buzzer pads right here, uh, positive and negative, and then we have our main battery leads. They also uh, list right here on the uh, back side of the board, they tell you which signals go to which you are, which I think is cool because sometimes it gets confusing when you have no idea where you're supposed to hook up what. So you've got SBUS on UART 1, telemetry on UART 3, and SAT on UART 6. Alright, here's my final build. Overall, I think it looks uh, super clean with this flight controller. In the back here, we have, uh, here's our VTX wire, and I've run my power and my ground to the power and ground for this ESC, and then I've run video to the video signal uh, pad. I'm going to circle back and re-solder my power and ground to the pads on the board. At the time, I wasn't aware that I could solder the 5-volt and or 9-volt bridges to supply power to those pads, and I was thinking they were just for pass-through. Um, but I would recommend using those those pads provided and then solder the jumpers for the voltage that you need for your two uh, VTX and camera. And then in the front, with the, uh, this is the, the this is the Foxier Aero micro camera, and it has power, ground, video. So again, I've run the, the power to the ESC power, the ground to the ESC ground, and then the video to the video. And then I've run my OSD white cable here to the camera control and that's going to let me go in here and modify the sensor settings uh, for the camera. And then I ran, I also ran the, the blue cable here which is the um, voltage uh, sensor and I just run that <clears throat> right down to the ESC power as well and that's going to get provide the, the power to the camera if I want to use that for OSD. The only two um, connections I use on the bottom of the board are underneath of here, Let's see if you can see, that is a uh, TBS Crossfire uh, Nano uh, receiver, and I'm running that to uh, I believe it's TX6 on the on the bottom of the board, um, and that's just for channel uh, channels one and channels two. And then here's the uh, Immortal T antenna that runs to that receiver underneath there, um, and that provides um, the the receiver just on those two channels will provide not only the controls but also Lewis script. Uh, telemetry as well, so I can go and get in there and change flight controller settings through that. Um, but that's it. It's su like super clean. I've run the uh, the ESC telemetry on each one of these ESCs. You can see I've soldered to that middle pin, and then I've run that up to the TX4 pad for each one of those. So if I zoom in here, you can see that yellow wire there is running to TX4, and that's on every single ESC. And then when we get into beta flight, we can configure that to be our ESC telemetry UR, and then that's going to allow us to read like ESC temperature, uh, motor RPM, and all that um, in the, on the flight controller, and even put it in the OSD if we choose so. All right, if you're going to be flashing this board, you're going to use the target, the CL Racing F4. Uh, I've gone ahead and flashed mine to 3.3. You'll check this. You'll click Load Firmware Online. You can read about what they changed here, and then you're going to click Flash Firmware. I'm not going to do this because I've just done mine. So we're going to go ahead and connect. If you use the satellite or SBUS pens for your receiver, you're going to check this box right here. Uh, I'm actually using uh, Crossfire on UART 3, uh, so I'm not going to check this, but for most of you guys who are, who are not using Crossfire, you're likely going to be selecting this. All right, if you've wired up your smart port telemetry to UART 3, which is telemetry on the board, then you're going to check. You're not going to have serial X selected, but you're going to choose smart port. The cool thing about UART 3 is it's actually got a hardware inverter built in so when you go to wire that up you don't have to use the the, the uh, RSXR uninversion mod on your receiver you can just use the third wire in which is smart port 
Uh, it, is, it is an inverted signal. You can run that right to UART 3, it'll uninvert it, and you'll be able to read it in just fine. For UART 4, if you wired up your ESCs like I did, then you're going to just uh, check off ESC right here. Um, and that's because we've wired up our 32-bit ESC telemetry wire to the UART 4 pins on the corners of the board. So we're going to choose ESC. And then for UART 6, um, I'm using an old kind of dummy VTX, but if you're using, say, the TBS Unify Pro or the Tramp, then you're going to come over here and you're going to choose uh, TBS Smart Audio or IRC Tramp. And that's going to enable you to use Smart Audio through your radio or the OSD. For the configuration tab, I'm going to be using DSHOT 1200 and I'm going to leave these other settings as default. I'm going to bump this up to 8K, 8K with the accelerometer on. I'm going to enter my craft name, and then, so like you can see here, I've selected serial uh, base receiver. Um, if you were on an S-Bus receiver, you would choose this. If you were on Spectrum, you do the Spectrum 2048. I'm using Crossfire, so I'm going to select that here. And then down below, let's get to features. Uh, if you're using Smart Port Telemetry, you need to have this telemetry selected. Uh, if you're using Crossfire, you need to have this telemetry uh, option selected. Um, you're going to want your ESC sensor turned on if you're using that UART 4 for ESC sensors. I'm going to turn on anti-gravity, dynamic filter, air mode, and I didn't wire up an LED strip, but if you wanted to do that, you turn it on here. And the rest of these settings I'm going to leave as is. Power and battery. If you wired up your ESC sensors, these would have been set initially to none. You're going to go ahead and set those to ESC sensor. And don't worry, you're not going to get any readings right now because you need a battery plugged in. But as soon as you plug in a battery, you should be seeing voltages on all of your motors. And then you should be able to uh, arm your quad and see that you are actually drawing amps on each one of those motors. On PID tuning, right off the bat, I'm going to leave this alone. I usually start with stock PIDs and see how it goes, and I'll start to bump them up from there. But in filter settings, I am going to change this to PT1, and I'm going to turn off these first two. Um, likely I'll come down and turn off this last one, but initially I want to test hover it and make sure I'm not getting warm or hot motors. If I test it with this and I have hot motors, then I'm going to add this back in there. I'm going to try it again. If it still gets hot motors, I'm going to do this. On the other side, if I test it just like this and I have uh, cool motors or just slightly warm motors, I might come down here and turn this off and, and try that out and see if the motors get hot. But for right now, I'm going to leave it just like this. On the receiver tab, um, if you're on Spectrum uh, or Tyrannus, you need to come down here and choose that. And I've chosen Auxiliary 8 because I'm using uh, Channel 8 for RSSI from Crossfire. Under Modes, uh, right now I just have an arm switch mode set up. Um, I normally will add a flip over after crash and a beeper, and that'll use the DSHOP protocol in order to enable those two modes. All right, for OSD, let's see, I'm going to do my battery voltage, timer 2. Craft name. Actually, I'm going to try current draw and I'm going to see if I'm actually getting that reading from my ESCs um, or if I need to be using a different setting for that. Uh, always leave on uh, warning here. Uh, you'll see that there in the middle. That's really great for, uh, for debugging problems when you first get your build done. You may find that you go to arm and it's not arming. And if you have warnings on, right here in, this, in your screen, you're going to see something like uh, angle mode or beepers on or you're in uh, flip over after crash mode or your gyros broken there this will give you a nice uh, readout of different warnings that are that are happening on your flight controller and it, it's really great for just debugging especially on a new build when the chance that something is messed up is high all right I'm gonna go ahead and save that all right and the CLI I'm gonna turn on two different settings one I will set oops, set small angle equal to 180. You can see I already have done that and I'm going to uh, set crash recovery on. What this does is it'll detect if you clip a gate or a tree or the ground and it will turn on horizon mode uh, and stabilize the quad and then kick it back off again. And we're going to type save to save that. And that's it. That's the beta flight configuration. That's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see how it goes and then uh, uh, go from there. In the next video, I'll be showing flight performance and reviewing the flight controller from that aspect. If this video helped you, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified when I push videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.